Hey guys, welcome back to our weekly live event. For those who don't know me, I'm Pascal Corcus. I teach finance, investing. Uh, I have a finance degree, minor in mathematics, a second degree in accounting, minor in economics and international business. I have an accounting firm, an insurance agency, and a mortgage company. I have a real estate investment company. We do construction and property management. So we do everything from A to Z. It's great to see everybody back. It's been about two weeks, but I'm excited to help you guys and uh, bring you guys to the next level. What's up, guys? Hope everyone's doing great. Hey, what's up, John? How you doing, John? Are you, if you guys are not following, this is John Williams. If you guys need to follow, this is John Williams. Great, great info. Lots of great info on YouTube. Uh, really great guy. I got to hang out with him a couple of times, so... Uh, John, when are you going to be back in uh, Florida? Hey, what's up, Peter? How you doing, Peter? Yo, let's get in 2020. Yeah, John, for sure. Um, so, yeah, in 2020, John's been calling it. I've been calling it. I think end of 2021, we're going to see some stuff happen we're going to see the market go down, um, and it's going to be a good time. So, John, you're going to be moving to Florida permanently for the next six months. Nice. Where are you going to be? Uh, oh, near Tampa. Nice. Yeah, you're going to like it here. It's nice here. John, you want to go live? Uh, uh, might be a little easier to talk that way. <laughs> What's up, Juan? What's up, guys? Good to see everybody again. So John, what part of 100% uh, Florida is where it's at? Cali sucks. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know you lived in Cali for a while. Um, yeah, so John, if you wanna go live, um, uh, I'm going down in a bit, working on a video while baby is sleeping. Cool, cool. So yeah, uh, definitely um, John is from Cali and um, obviously as a real estate investor, um, Cali is not um, the best place to be a real estate investor. So. Uh, Florida, Texas, and Arizona has landlord-friendly laws, so it makes it easier to do business in the state. Um, so end of 2020, um, we were seeing a lot of turbulence, as you guys know. A lot of it's from the election, but beginning of 2021, things are definitely going to uh, become very turbulent once the new president takes over and all the stimulus money runs out. Uh, once that happens, uh, the market is going to reflect how um, how many problems is, is truly there. Uh, one, businesses don't really have money. They don't have revenue coming in because a lot of places are being shut down. Employees don't have money. They have unemployment and, and such. So it's not going to spell uh, it's not going to spell out good for the economy because we need natural. Uh, a natural stimulus in the economy, like natural spending. Uh, if we just keep printing money and handing it out, it's not going to really help us grow in a healthy fashion. So um, thoughts on rentals in Vegas? Vegas is a pretty good market as well. Uh, you just got to be very careful not to be too, too close to um, the strip. The issue is if you're too, too much involved – in the uh, entertainment side of the business, when the economy goes down, the entertainment side of the business suffers. So you have to be very careful about investing in that type of uh, uh, environment because when the times are good, it's good, but when times are bad, it's bad. It's kind of like if you're investing kind of close to the Jersey Shore in New Jersey. If you have a lot of your uh, tenant base is entertainment based or restaurant based, when the economy goes down, you're going to see uh, uh, a suffering from your clients. And if your clients, meaning your tenants, are suffering, then you as a landlord are going to suffer as well. So you have to be careful of who um, your, um, 
who you're renting to and, and understand what's happening in the market to, to determine uh, what moves you should make to protect yourself. So guys, um, as you guys know, anyone who has to go live gets their questions answered first. Anyone who sends their questions in YouTube, DM, or on IG question section gets their question answered second. And then third, uh, I'll be answering the questions that are that are actually coming through the comment section. Um, so, all right, guys, let's see. What other questions can I answer for you guys? All right. Are you one of a million people? With All right, that's kind of got messed up there. So, um, all right, here we go. George. George says, Hey, Pascal, do you think that insurance companies in the future would be able to move in and buy large, large deals, 20 million plus? So the answer is yes, they can, and they do uh, currently do that. They also lend money on large projects. So a lot of the big players that are lending money, you know, that we're talking about million, five million, ten, twenty, hundred million dollar uh, loans. Those are actually from life insurance companies. They're actually providing loans. So yes, they can come in and buy those deals, and yes, they can come in and uh, provide the loans for those deals. So they are part of the, uh, they are some of the other buyers out there in addition to other institutional buyers. Uh, Shadabin's question is, hello, thanks for the valuable info. What are your thoughts about buying house in Canada and any recommended areas? Well, as you guys know, I don't really, the area doesn't matter as much because the strategies work anywhere on the planet. The goal is to buy undervalued properties. If you buy undervalued properties, you're going to make money. All right. So um, George has some follow-up questions. He says, the, uh, through the IRAs, what cap rate do you think they would look at? Most of these large companies, they'll buy four cap and five cap properties. They buy very, very low cap properties, but extremely safe property. So they're going to look at properties that are, um, you know, UPS, um, like, like, um, UPS has a, uh, shipping a ship, like an airport. They have, a, a sh uh, can, like one of the projects they were looking at recently was, uh, there was, a uh, UPS has a, uh, basically a small airport hangar, and they pay millions of dollars a year to rent that hangar, institutional investors usually will buy those type of deals because they know UPS is going to pay the bill. Uh, they're going to pay the rent. Uh, they'll buy Starbucks properties. They'll buy uh, large properties that are with AAA rated uh, tenants. So big uh, properties uh, with major tenants uh, is what they normally uh, go for. Very safe stuff is basically what you look at. Most of the stuff that I don't really look at personally, because I'm not looking at a four or five cap property. I'm looking for something uh, better than that. And how much debt would you get if you were in their shoes? Well, me personally, I would get as much debt as possible for the right asset. Now, then they usually will probably put down 30 to 40% on their deals. So you know, um, they're, they usually have a ton of money. Their issue is not money. They, they usually have a lot of money. So, uh, they're not concerned about, you know, paying, uh, or putting the least amount down. They're going to put a lot down. All right. Got a lot of questions coming in. How much do you think it will cost to build a 3000 square foot detached home? Well, that's a really important. It's the question of where are you building? Like, so in where, where I'm at, in Pinellas County, which is the more populated county, uh, th their deals are looking, they're, they're building at like almost $200 a square foot. But if you're going to Pasco County and you're getting a, um, you know, 
one of the national home builders, they're building at 150 a square foot. So the, where you're getting it built and who is building your home will make a big difference. And how custom your home is makes a big difference. So, all right. Why do credit reporting agencies have to do supplement reports on my credit during the loan process if there's a way to avoid this? Um, there really isn't a way to avoid it because if they want to do a supplemental report, they want to check on it again in the loan process, they can do that. I mean, that's what they, they want to be sure that there is no additional uh, loans being uh, pulled while you're applying for the first loan or the current loan. So they're going to pull another, another report and there really isn't a way to avoid that. What do you prioritize, single, small multis, or large multis? Um, one, I don't really look at single family condos or townhouses at all. So I only the only time I look at them is for a flip. I don't hold them. I, it's not in my it's not part of the my investment type, and I don't feel that it's a class that is going to perform as well as a multi unit property. So when I am looking at that, I'm looking at small and large multi units. And what I look at is value add deals, value add deals in a good area. And that's, it doesn't matter what the size is, to be honest with you, as long as there's value add and it's a good area, then that's something I'm interested in. All right. Good questions, guys. What are red flags when you are looking at a duplex and triplex? Well, in general, when I'm looking at any property, the red flags I'm looking at is the, the, con is the condition of the property. Because let's, let's, let's pinpoint certain facts. If I'm looking at a property, then that means the area is good and the price that they're asking for is, is a good price. So since I know the area is good, I know the market's good, the, the price they're asking asking for is a pretty good price. So now I'm going to check why is it that low? There's certain reasons that are acceptable for it to be that low. Let's just say mismanagement. If I found out that the, the, the owner isn't doing a good job with increasing the rents, like the rents in the area are currently a thousand dollars and he's currently renting out, say, let's just say $700. So it's a fourplex and he's bringing in $2,800 where if I took the property over and I did, I made some changes to the property, maybe uh, made it look a little nicer, uh, I can get $4,000. Well, that's a good reason to, uh, for me that the property is undervalued. It's an easy thing for me to fix. Okay, I'm gonna upgrade some items. I'm going to uh, do something to make it a little bit nicer. Now, as long as, and, and for me personally, because I, for me, I don't, it doesn't matter how bad the condition of the property is. I, it doesn't matter to me. It could be in a horrible condition. It doesn't, it, well, as long as the price is right, I am willing to buy a property in bad shape. I've bought properties with bad roofs, AC systems, bad foundations, uh, electrical needs upgrade, plumbing needs upgraded, like full remodels, A to Z. The, the house I just purchased uh, about six months ago in Safety Harbor, I bought it for two hundred eighty thousand, and I'm probably going to end up putting two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand into it. So almost as much as what I bought it for. But I should be able to sell it for eight hundred thousand dollars. So I'll have in probably all in six hundred, and I'll sell it for eight hundred. So I'm going to make two hundred thousand dollars. So in that scenario, I'm fine with all of the issues. The question you have to ask yourself is are you prepared for all those issues? And if the answer is yes, you're prepared for it and you can handle those issues and you have people on your team to fix all the problems that are, that are gonna come up. The, the main point is it's not so much red flags. The point is that you know what the issues are, you account for them, you determine what the cost is for those issues. So you're gonna take cost of the property, 
total cost of all the renovations, and then total overall cost. And you take that from your sale amount. And as long as you're making a profit at the end, then it doesn't matter what the issues are. But we have to keep in mind that we're uh, properly assessing all the issues. Now, if you do not know how to assess these issues, you can get inspectors, general contractors, and different people to make those determinations for you, where by that and by you using other people on your team to come to a conclusion, you can then be confident on, is there gonna be money in this deal? Because the simple, if I make this simple, if you buy a used car under value, fix it up and resell it and make a profit, that is what we're doing flipping homes. We're buying a home under value. And even after we spend the money to fix the property up, we can still resell it for a profit. That is the goal when you're flipping homes. Um, the issue, what are the red flags? Not with the property, but with the investor. The issue with some investors are they buy properties and they don't properly assess what's wrong and how to remodel it properly. They think every property that they buy is just going to be paint inside, paint outside, and put some landscaping and resell it. Where they don't realize that, wow, this property has a major plumbing problem, major electrical problem, or roof problem. And now they end up having to spend $60,000 more than they expected on this property, and they get stuck. So that's the issue. It's not more red flags. Um, it's not noticing the red flags, right? If that, uh, that should answer your question. All right, so George has some more, George, George has another question. I mean, by IRAs that they can buy a building through their IRAs. So one, it's a, be very careful about buying your uh, property through an IRA. It, it can, it's gonna cause a major tax problem. If you're going to do that, you need to buy, if through a retirement account, you would need to use an EQRP, an EQRP. By using it that way, you're going to avoid this big hidden tax. But if you buy it through an IRA, you're going to end up being hit with that big tax. Uh, if you need more questions, just DM me. If you have more questions regarding that, DM me and we can go into more detail with that. You can also buy into real estate syndications through your EQRP retirement account. Uh, Peter's question is, listings go pending here after only being on the market for less than 24 hours. My agent is saying people are outbidding by substantially um, substantial amounts. Supply is so low. When is the buyer market coming? The supply will start to change after May of 2021. Then the foreclosures are going to start coming out and there will be a change in the market. Um, and then for the next three years after that, we're going to see a, uh, the supply be increased more than normal um, because we're going to be seeing foreclosures that, that started in 2018 and they're going to start hitting now. So most of the foreclosures you're going to see that are going to come to market are actually not even COVID foreclosures. They're just actually 2018 foreclosures. There's about 14.5 million um, properties that are sold that are uh, that are owner financed, and those owner financed deals did not get did not have any uh, COVID or any type of relief on the, the monthly mortgage payments. So there's a lot of properties that are that are um, that are didn't get any type of assistance. In addition to that, there's about two, I think two million homes that are currently in foreclosure. And out of those two million, one million didn't even choose to go into forbearance. So we have a, a, a minimum one million homes that are gonna hit the market uh, just from the, from the COVID crisis. And then there's obviously a lot of them are gonna hit the market prior to the COVID crisis as well. So um, there's going to be more supply coming and because of COVID and all the restrictions that happened, they were not allowed to come to market. So this is an artificially, an artificially low, low supply right now. So don't make decisions on, 
oh, everyone's buying now and you have some type of FOMO. I am telling you that right now we have an artificially low supply of homes and we're going to be getting a, a large chunk of homes coming to the market in the next six to 12 months. I'm not God. I cannot tell you the future of the day and the time that it's going to happen. But I am telling you, it will happen. And every single big player in the real estate game knows this and is getting prepared. So get prepared. All right. Hugo says, does my income affect how much I can apply for a loan? Yes, Hugo. The amount of income you show will affect the amount of money you can get. It's called ability to repay. So if you don't show enough money, you're not your, your ability or if you show a certain amount of money, that's going to limit how much you can repay. Um, now, the good news is when you're buying an investment property, the income from that investment property is added to your income. So you'll be able to, let's just say you're applied for in this example, I'm going to say, say you're approved to buy a $300,000 house, but you found a triplex that you would like to buy that's worth say 500,000. The bank will, will likely give you that loan for 500,000 if the rents from two of those units are high enough to justify the extra uh, loan amount because you're going to basically cover 300,000 alone. And as long as those two units um, are paying a decent amount of rent, it should be, it will be added to your income. And then that income will be um, increase your ability to repay. What's up, guys? Uh, I prefer fourplexes, but it's best for you to get a duplex, triplex, or fourplex in a good area. So I'm going to choose area over the number of units. So if you're going to find an amazing du duplex deal in a great area, that's worth more than a good fourplex deal and not a great area. Now, remember... You should also try to find areas that are going to be gentrified, that are up and coming, because then you can ride the wave of appreciation. But don't be, don't be in fantasy land and think, okay, well, this one area is great, and then three miles away, this other area is going to become great. It's probably not. And also consider this, even though that, say, two streets over is a great area, and but this current street you're looking at isn't a great area. If there's something major like a highway or a school district line, that's, that's imaginary there, imaginary there. Like you're not going to, you're not, your areas isn't going to get better. So for example, let's just say across the street, that area has a great school district and those homes are very expensive. Don't think that your side of the street will become very expensive as well. It might go up a little bit, but it's not going to get as expensive. It's not going to go. It's not going to appreciate as much as those other homes because the reason that they're worth so much is because they're in a good school district. So keep that in mind because there might not be a physical reason why that side is better. It might be this imaginary line that says that side gets good schools. This guy, this side doesn't. So keep that in mind as well. All right, guys. Um, let's see what questions you guys have. What's up? All right. Um, area means closer to downtown? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean closer to downtown. For example, like if you're in downtown LA, that's not a good area to be right now. It's dead, it's closed. Lots of restrictions, but let's just say you're in a city that's an hour away from LA, an hour and a half away from LA. In that city, the downtown market is probably going to have a big premium right now because it's not going to be as restricted as the LA market, but it's, 
it still has some freedoms, which is great. And at the same time, you're close to everything. So you have the opportunity to still walk around and enjoy your life. I believe downtown core markets are going to be uh, appreciating significantly over the next 15 years. Got a question here. Good, how are you? So I do think that's a good idea. I do think that people should do a cash out refinance and get the money because if you get a home equity line of credit and try to pull the money out that way, what banks have done in the past is they've actually pulled, uh, uh, they've reduced the amount that your line of credit can draw. For example, my father had a line of credit for about $150,000 back in 08. And I told him, pull the money out because the bank's going to actually shrink your line of credit and you're not going to be able to get that money later. And he's like, no, I don't need it, blah, 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 blah. They dropped his line of credit to something around like 30 or 40,000 from 150,000. So then later when all those deals were available, he couldn't draw the extra money he was expecting to have to go buy those great deals that came out. So yes, pull, cash is king. And when no one else has cash, you can buy some great deals. So if you do a cash out refi, sit on the cash. Right now, I have a mortgage company. I'm doing refinances for people between 1.99 and like 2.99. So they're really great, uh, great interest rates that are historically low, ridiculously low. And they're like basically below inflation rate. So it, in my opinion, I call that free money. Okay, I just have one more, one more question. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, we had uh, we had the house right here. Um, I, I believe my parents bought it back in two thousand eight or six. I believe the house is around seven percent interest rate. We paid uh, about fifteen years now. Uh, we were considering maybe getting a cash out refinancing and uh, getting the lower interest rate, but it, it is at, at the fifteen year mark. So would you would you do that or would you? A hundred percent, a hundred seven percent, seven percent. Okay. First step one, if you, if your parents were very old school and said, I don't want to refinance and get another 30 year loan, let's make believe they say that if they refinance to a 15 year mortgage. So then instead of getting a brand new 30 year, they would just get a new loan, but this new loan's only for 15 years. We can get an interest rate between 1.99 and like 2.25%. That's less than one third of what you're paying. So like what, um, how much do your parents owe right now? I'll, I'll tell you how much you'll save. I believe they owe, uh, I think they owe around 180. 180. So we'll make the numbers simple. We'll say 200,000 just to make the numbers simple, right? If you go from 2.25 from what, 7% you said? Yeah, I think 7, 6%. I'm not really sure. That's around that. Okay. So we'll just say it's. Let's just say 4%. You're going to say 4%, which is we're going to make believe you're currently paying 6.25 and you go from 6.25 to 2.25. That's 4%. That means they're going to save $8,000 a year in interest. That means they're going to save about $700 a month in interest each month. And when you're ready to do it, DM me because we'll do the mortgage. My company, I have a mortgage company, I have an accounting firm, and I have an insurance agency. So we handle it all for real estate investors. Now, what would I do? What's what I call optimal play? What, what I think is the best that I would do? I would do a cash out refinance on a 30-year mortgage because the payment is going to be super small compared to a 15-year mortgage. A 15-year mortgage and a 30-year mortgage, a 15-year mortgage is roughly 50% larger than a 30 year mortgage. And if you wanted to pay off the loan faster, you could just make extra payments on the 30 year and pay it off in 15. But the point is cash is king. Get the cash, 
sit on the money, get a 30 year loan, have a small payment and use that money to buy another property when good deals come out in like six months to a year. Okay, because I, I do know that uh, foreclosures are supposed to be coming up uh, in the yep. So It's going to be six to 12 months, roughly. So you would say do it now and then just sit on the money for about a year. Let me ask you something. In six to 12 months, when the foreclosures start coming, will the banks give you money? No. You have to, t there's a rule, there's a rule with the bank, okay? Because I used to work for the bank. So this is a this is a bank. This is what bankers say. The bank will give you money when you don't need it. And they will not give you the money when you need it. So ask for the money when you don't need it. So you have it when you do need it. Okay. So I'm selling the properties I don't love now. And I'm doing cash out refinance on every property I do love and do want to keep. So I have a bunch of cash sitting here. And when all these people are like, oh, shit, there's all these great deals out here. I want to buy them. I don't have any money because I was afraid to do a cash out refinance a year ago. I'm going to come in and I'm going to buy up all those great deals. All the people that follow me that want to invest with me, they're going to buy up all the great deals with me. Wow. So you have to be prepared because these opportunities only come like once, one time every like 10 years. So this is not the only time you can do it. So everyone that's afraid out there, this is not the only time you're going to have to do this. It's going to happen again in another 10 years. The issue is, do you want to wait another 10 years to buy great deals? Or do you want to buy great deals now, sell them later and make a ton of profit and do it again in another 10 years? Okay. So, so like, let's say, um, you know, uh, I, 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 I believe my dad's going to have like, the greatest credit right now. Credit actually, you only need like a 620 credit score for a conventional loan. The minimum credit is like 620. Okay. So instead of uh, using that cash for, for this house right here, just sit on it. You can do a cash out refund. What the bank will do is they'll literally just give you the money. They'll, like, they'll, they'll just literally give you a check for like, let's just say your house is worth, let's just say your house is worth $400,000. They'll refinance you for up to like say 300 cash out refi. So let's just say you owe 200. They'll cut you a check for $100,000. So you'll just sit on $100,000 until there's something that, you know, you find that's worth buying. Okay. But now when you get the $100,000, this is why I'm warning to you. Don't just blow up on any deal. $100,000 is not a lot of money. So you have to hold it, hold on to it tight, and you have to wait for an amazing deal. This is what's going to happen. In six months, some good deals are going to come out. Not great deals, good deals. And you shouldn't buy them. You should wait maybe 12 months to get the great deals. Okay. All right? You just have to be patient. When you're ready to do a refi, DM me and I'll help you guys. I will DM you. I'm going to talk to the parents right now, and we'll see where we move forward from there. Awesome. Good luck. Thank God you. bless. Have a great night. You too. Take care. All right. Great questions. What's up, guys? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm passionate because I really love this. I really love this. And when there's opportunities for people to – to take, get it to the next level in this world. I'm really passionate about it because these opportunities, one, don't come around too often and not many people take advantage of them. And when you have the opportunity to, to take it to the next level, to help your family take it to the next level and get out of the struggle, I think it's amazing. Because there's a saying, they said, um, um, God, I'm, I'm, go, I'm, I'm blank. I'm going blank on that saying, but there's a saying that basically um, God made all uh, created all men equal, but um, there's a saying that says God created all men, but um, like the the Smith and Wesson made all men equal, basically saying like the the gun made. Uh, large men and short men equal because now they both have the same fighting ability. Um, 
But in my philosophy, it's fine. Uh, personal finance is really can what make all people equal because it doesn't matter where you're from or what color your skin is, or if you're a man or a woman, or if you're young or old, if you use the financial tools that we have available in this country and actually in most countries now, you can take it to the next level. It doesn't matter where your family came from or what they have. It doesn't matter because I didn't really have anything. No one gave me anything. My parents didn't give me any handouts and they didn't have any kind of education. I mean, my dad didn't pass, I think the fourth grade. So it's not like we had, we got anything special, right? But if you use the financial tools that, that all of us are able to, to use, um, you really can take it to the next level for yourself and your family. Um, the opportunities are amazing. So the question here is, uh, are you interested in agriculture? Um, I'm, that's not personally something I'm interested in, to be honest with you. It's just not my style. Uh, I prefer property that can be rented. So if there's not, a, I want, my goal is to own as much property as possible. But the property needs to have a cash flow associated to it because I need money coming in every month to cover the mortgage payment and to make some money and to cover expenses if anything breaks. Now, with agriculture, you could make a lot of money when you're selling the, 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 the product. The issue is if you have a bad season or a drought and everything you know dies, now you don't have money coming in. And plus, you have to pay people to go do all the work. So reality is it's not really as passive as rentals are. It's more of an active business. Um, that's why I don't really prefer agriculture or just raw land. Uh, people ask me, why don't you just buy and hold land? Because there's no cash flow associated to it. So, um, and then in addition to that, if I want to bring it to the next level, I find areas that have a cash flow associated to it and have significant room for appreciation. So I can ride that wave. What advice would you give a first time home buyer who plans to buy in the next six months? Uh, don't buy in the next six months. Uh, do not put a timeline on when you're going to buy. That is very bad. Okay. You only have a certain number, certain amount of money you can spend. So you shouldn't put a target on I'm going to buy in the next six months. No, if the deal isn't available, rent. But when you find a great deal, buy. It. If it's now, if it's six months, if it's two years from now, buy a good deal. That is what's important because you make your money in the buy. You know, you can't fix how much you paid for a property after you bought it. You know, you make your money in the buy. Buy good deals. How would you do your second deal with less than 50K capital? If you already have an FHA loan with a multi, I mean, 50K is not, is, is a decent amount. You could put 20% down on a $250,000 uh, property. Uh, at the same time, you can also do a cash out refi on your first property, get more money out. And then you can also get a line of credit on that first property and get more money out. So potentially you can unlock more money there. Also, you might have some money available in your, um, in your 401k to pull out and add to the 50k. So you could potentially have a lot more money than you think you do. You need to have someone, you know, I'm, I'm in, I have a mortgage company. I can review all your, all that information and tell you where you can unlock more money. But again, it's not always how much cash you'll have in my account. There's usually other options. Uh, how do you feel about getting a loan with a cosigner if your employment history is tough to work with lenders? Well, right now, I actually were doing a loan for someone that only has about three months of, of work history, and they're able to get a conventional loan. So it depends what your scenario. But I mean, uh, again, I'm working with someone right now that only has three months of uh, employment history, and we're able to get them a loan. Hugo, Hugo has another question. He says, is it hard to get an FHA loan when there's a crash? It isn't hard to get an FHA loan when there's a crash, but the market does get significantly compressed. Lending becomes harder. 
So you can get one, it just becomes harder now um, and things get slower. So it's still possible. Yes, it's still doable. We're still gonna lend when the market crashes. Unless we go through like a, uh, what happened in 08 where like the, the full mortgage system all freezes, like literally freezes up. If that happens, then obviously there's nothing I could do about that. Uh, but once it unfreezes, then we'll be able to do more deals. Can I live in my apartment and buy units as well? I don't understand that question. Can you buy a four unit property and live in one of them? Yes, that's called house hacking. All right. All right, guys, what other questions do you have for me? Why is it so hard to find good deals? Great question. The reason it's so hard to find good deals is because everybody is looking to buy real estate. Normally, when I'm buying a piece of property, I buy it within 24 hours of it hitting the market. If I do not buy it within 24 hours of it hitting the market, someone else bought it. Because if you're studying your market, you will know what a good deal is. And when it comes, you're going to be running to try to buy it before anybody else does. How risky are REITs? in the USA. So REITs are real estate investment trusts and REITs are not technically risky in the US. It's not meaning not all REITs are risky in the US. You have to know what does the REIT own? Because if you have a REIT that owns apartment complexes and B class neighborhoods, then you're going to be you're going to be pretty good. If you own REITs that own um you know big box commercial real estate then you're going to be in trouble. If your REIT owns restaurants, then you're going to be in trouble. If your REIT owns, uh, you know, industrial warehouse and storage unit facilities, then you're going to be fine. It depends. What does your REIT own? You know, that's what matters. Why is San Diego so expensive? because you have rich people that live there that have so much money they don't know what to do with. So they pay crazy money for the real estate and then they end up buying a bunch of other real estate and pay crazy money for it as well because they have so much money and they have nowhere to put it. Can refinance be possible on a property that is paid for? Yes, it's called the cash out refinance. Paul says, let's say there is a tsunami of foreclosures in 12 months. Do you think I will be able to get a loan with 20% down during a, during a 10 year reception or recession? I'm assuming you say that. Um, you should be able to, but it's gonna be a little hard initially, right? And remember if everything drops 20, 30%, you might be so, some people get so freaked out that they don't end up buying anything. It, that's crazy, right? The market drops 30% and people still get scared to buy anything. It's like, oh my God, what if it drops more? You know, just be happy you got a good deal. And then in 10 years, you'll be in a good position. Don't worry about what happens in one day. Think about it, what's going to happen in five to 10 years. I'm an 18 year old with enough cash saved for 20% down on a two bedroom apartment as an investment property, planning to rent it and move to the U.S. from Aussie for college. Any opinion on that? I don't think that's a great idea. I think you should you should buy a two-unit, three-unit, or a four-unit property. You, their first loan is the easiest one for you to get. So just be patient and buy a multi-unit property. You're going to thank me later. 
Hub says, can refinance be possible on a property that is paid for? Uh, I think I already answered that. The answer is yes. How long does it take to process a refi with your company? Um, well, normally three weeks. But if you have a lot of problems and there's issues, then it could be like six weeks. It really depends on uh, if you have any problems. What's a good debt to income ratio percentage for con for conventional and for FHA loans? Conventionals, you want to be like, you know, like 32% on your front end ratio. But then on an the FHA loan, you could be as high as like 48 or 50% on your back end ratio. But it really depends on like what is consistent of your debt to, to make it that 48, 50% back end ratio. Um, you know, but really you want to be like, 42% or less back end. Because obviously the, the higher your debt to income ratio is, the harder it is to, to do your loan. The lower it is, the easier it is. Can you get a conventional loan for three and 5% down or does it have to be 20% every time? If it's an investment property, it has to be 20%. If it's an owner-occupied property, then you can do something like 3.5 to 5% uh, if it's owner-occupied. What equation comes to play to find a good deal? Normally, I'm looking at uh, value add. If I bought it for um, 300 and I put in 30, what is, is it worth 400 when I'm done? You know, something like that. Uh, but preferably purchase price plus renovation budget should be 70% of ARV. And if you do that, you'll have a perfect burr. Well, you can't just say, will South Dakota be a good place to invest in 2021? You want to focus where in South Dakota will be a good place to invest in 2021. It's not, you cannot, I can't say, all of Florida is going to be a great place to invest in and all of Texas and all of Arizona. Yes. Those three States have benefits, uh, uh, where people are going to want to move to, but not the whole state's going to do well. You have to find what part of that state is going to do well and invest there. Now, if you find a secondary tertiary market in South Dakota, that's in a downtown market, then you're probably going to do well, but not every single one will do well. You have to do your research to see which is going to do better than the other ones. All right, Red Shark says, can I please join? Uh, I actually tried to add you and um, it just kept on saying waiting. Any, uh, sorry, I'm, plan I'm planning to start business. Hey, what's up, buddy? Good evening from the underground world. Good evening. It's good. <laughs> I mean, all 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 rock and roll. I mean, you're not going to ask me about a specific band. Doesn't every genre count? I mean, every genre counts, but not every single uh, not every single artist in the genre I'm going to like. Like, if you're like, okay, it's System of the Down. Yeah, I like System of the Down, um, but not every single like punk rock band I'm going to enjoy, you know, like I don't like every rapper and I like rap music. I don't like every EDM artist. I like some of them. Who are some of your favorite bands? Um, from what right now, cause I'm not thinking about music. I'm thinking about business. Um, I like system of the down rage against machine. Those are like the ones that can come off the top of my, uh, my head. Um, we used to listen to, it's been a long time since I listened to rock music, uh, like Papa Roach in, in high school. We used to listen to, um, I didn't really listen to much of Metallica, but there were some songs I liked. You know, there's like, you know, different ones. Thank you for telling me your thoughts on rock, on rock and roll, and I shall now descend and let you be in your 
Have a good night, buddy. All right, gotta love the kids. So, uh, all right. Why is real estate always booming? Um, let me tell you something, buddy. It is not always booming. Right now it's booming because what happened, the Federal Reserve put out like six trillion dollars seven trillion dollars that's a ridiculous amount of money and basically money has to go somewhere money flows like water and money is flowing to the to the uh thing of least resistant which is investments so when you get a ton of money where can i put it away right now i can put it in bitcoin i can put it in um stocks i can put it in real estate that's just what happens so that's why it's booming. But money is actually going to run out real soon. Like water, it's going to run out. Like it's going to go right down the drain. And if you don't have a way to, to pump a well and get more water, you're not going to – excuse me. You're not going to be able to get it. And all this money is going to be running out. So George said um, – Do you know any medium sized insurance companies that buy triple net leases? Do I know them personally? No, I don't really communicate with them. Uh, they're more of a competition than someone I communicate with about buying stuff. Um, and how would you approach the search of an insurance company that is involved with this type of acquisition? And lastly, do you think they would be interested to buy those types of assets now? I mean, they are, but almost no one's looking at office buildings or retail or uh, restaurants. So if, if that's the type of asset you're looking to sell, they're not going to buy. Um, now, who would know? One of those big um, real estate companies, the big real estate brokers that they, they deal with institutional investors. All right, Hugo. Um Hugo says, how was your customer able to get a loan with three months of employment history? Is the bank asking for two years of tax returns? No, the bank is not asking for two years of tax returns. Right now they're asking for two years of W-2s and two months of pay stubs. So if you went from one job to another job and you only have three months with the new job, then that's going to be acceptable. So again, uh, not too hard, um, but if you're saying uh, I only worked, you know, if you, if yeah, for some reason you were like working for only three months in 2020 and because of COVID let you, you know, kept you off work for, for months, but then in 2019, it showed that you're working and now you're back to work, then yeah, you could. It, it, you, it, you're able to get a loan in, in that many people in that scenario are able to still refinance. Uh, Peter says, just like stocks, it's hard to catch a falling knife, not knowing where the bottom is. Peter, what I'll tell you is this. Don't worry about where the bottom is because you're not, don't worry about, well, here's the top and here's the bottom and then here's the next top, and I want to buy right here. Yeah, you're not gonna, it's not gonna happen. When it comes down, give it six months to 12 months and then buy. If it goes down some more, who cares? Because if you're buying property for land costs plus material costs or construction costs, that means you're buying it for under the value it would cost you to replace the item. You're still gonna win. And then you can climb on the way back just because you had another 10% left, you know, don't, don't kick yourself over that. You know, you might miss out, look for a good deal, buy a good deal and be happy. And if you want to buy more, save up more money, join partnerships and buy with them. Cause I know it's hard to save up maybe 50 or a hundred thousand dollars to buy another deal. Well, save up 25,000, join a partnership group and buy with them. Then save up another $25,000 and buy, another, buy, buy with another partnership group, investment group.
because then you can be able to just pick up on the way little bits and then well, buy on the way little bits. Why is your first mortgage the easiest to get? Is it because it assumes you have less room in your back end DTI ratio? That is one of the reasons is that your back end DTI ratio has a lot more room, right? You don't have other debts available. When you go for the second property, you have to account for additional rental income. And that additional rental income has to come in and in, in be obviously new income. Then you have to have a second loan to be added in to your DTI. So that starts tightening, especially most people don't do cash out refinances properly. So they don't lower their, their expenses to lower their DTI. So it just it starts to become a constriction. So um, basically your first deal is the easiest deal. So go for two, three or four units. I'm not saying your deals after that are impossible. I'm just saying it takes some time and you have to make sure that you're make, executing properly so you don't stagnate your growth. All right, guys, it's getting late. I've been up since five o'clock. I did jujitsu this morning and I saw the Cairo, went to work and then I did Wing Chun and I'm tired. So guys, um, if you guys need help with refinancing your homes, purchasing a new property, getting your taxes done for your businesses or personally, insurance, or you need advice overall, feel free to DM me and we can set up a consultation call. Uh, if you guys wanna learn more and get take it to the next level, I have a course called Foundations of Personal Finance. Anyone who buys the course, when they do a refinance with me, I will give you back the money of your for the course. The goal for the course is to have people learn and grow. And as you learn and grow, you're obviously going to need my help for loans. You need my help with taxes. And I'm more than happy to help you guys. So I want you guys to succeed because the more successful you become, the more successful I become. And um, if you do a refinance with me or purchase with me before you purchase the course, I'll end up giving you the course for free just to help you guys grow and learn to get you guys to the second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth deal. All right, guys. I love you. God bless. Good night.